Hello everyone and welcome to Claude and the Banksters for this um, controversial sort of comments tonight. Uh, you know, is Arteta out of his depth? Should we have had Mourinho as our manager? And a bit of talk on Man City's FFP and their overturned decision. I uh, just want to welcome everyone in the comments. Hope you're all well. Um, sorry that we're late. Um, about 15, 16 minutes late and then scheduled. We was doing a pre-recorded show with Craig, our friend's uh, Anfield Agenda, that will be going out uh, tomorrow. So everyone go and give that a, um, a watch and a follow. Um, we will be tweeting too. But let's get straight to it. Uh, just say hello to everyone in the chat like we normally do. Uh, Salman, Archie, Omar, Natish, uh, Connor, T-Jazz, Al uh, Afsav, Dilwyn Jones, Jake, uh, Alex, Tom, Alex, Alex, as well. Alex, Alex in the chat, uh, Harry, Ryan, um, Liam, loads of people in the chat, Urban Ghost, Bradley, hope you well. Let's get straight down to it. Um, obviously, bad result uh, the weekend, Tottenham 2, Arsenal 1, and there's been a lot of um, debate on Twitter today. Uh, hashtag Arteta out, and uh, Arteta is not a leader and he's out of his to be the Arsenal manager. So, cool. what, what, what's your take on, on them comments that I've been seeing today on Twitter, mate? Well, I've never said he's, uh, he's not... Uh, what, I'm, what, I, what I will say, and um, he's not exempt from criticism. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I, don't, I didn't say he had to go. I, I just said he's not exempt from criticism. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't want him in at the start, and a lot of these, a lot of these who are supporting him now probably didn't want him at the start. But then he's he made a few speeches, and they this it's turned them around. But listen, at the end of the day, I just feel he needed to be criticised yesterday for his. Um, uh, for what he done yesterday, I thought it's poor, poor team selection, poor substitutions, and yes, I thought Mourinho had a plan, he, which came off, and uh, for me, got the better of him yesterday. And uh, after a lot of people were quite writing him off completely, I, I, you cannot write Mourinho off because of his record. Simple as that. Uh, you can't write the man off. The man's won trophies all around Europe. You don't lose it just like that completely. And on on this on this occasion, he had a game plan and it worked. And we we got beat. And simple as that. I just want to explain why I'm in the dark. And I have got my light on. I'm in my van, in my work van. I, I work overnight, so I'm doing this from my van. Um, so I'm sure you can't clearly see me. Uh, just getting back to the point. For me, um, <clears throat> I don't think Mourinho had a plan yesterday. Um, I, I don't think Tottenham done anything to warrant winning the game, or did we, saying that. Um, we gifted them the first goal without a shadow of a doubt, with um, a mistake again by defenders. Um, and it's just, it's just disappointing. It is very disappointing. Um, I understand why people do make comments. Why is he picking David Lewin? Why is he picking Kozniak? Why is he picking Mustafi? But I will go back to what I've said before, and that is that we haven't got anyone else in this squad at the minute. We've got no one else. We've got Oldin, that's fit, that's on the bench, and Socrates. Now, personally, everyone knows my feelings on David Luiz. I don't think he should be anywhere near the team. Um, I think Olden should be in his place, and he better be in his place Saturday in for the Cup uh, against Man City, because if he ain't and David Luiz is in, then it won't be worth watching. Um, but for me, Mourinho, yeah, I know what he's done in the past. Um, I keep seeing that, um, you know, he won trophies everywhere, and then I keep seeing the reference that um, why do we? Why? Why is um, Emery been put down and everything like that? Because he won twenty three games on a spin. Well, not twenty three games on a spin. We went twenty three games unbeaten. But you, everyone talks about that unbeaten run that he went on. But what about the run that he went on just before he got sacked? 
We didn't mm. win a game in eight or nine games, and that was the first time in 26 years in Arsenal history. 26 years. Now, surely we should be picking up on that because we don't win trophies because we went 23 games without a loss. We didn't get mm. a trophy for that. We didn't get a trophy for that. And if if we're going on about, well, our, you know, this time last year, Emery got us to the, to the uh, Europa, European Cup final, then we could say that about Mourinho. Pochettino got them that team to the Champions League final with Harry Kane and Son being injured in that season too. So then really, Mourinho, is, who is the experienced manager, he should be getting more of the heat on him from Tottenham fans than what Arsenal fans are giving Arteta, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. So... Uh, uh... Um, yeah, I bet you remember. Not. I've got to say, on Mourinho's uh defense, he has had um two of very, very key players, and they proved that yesterday. They were, uh, I mean, Son has been uh one of their best players, and he's been out for a while. Um, Kane has been out for a while, so it's it's not easy. I, but I, I, I understand where you're coming from. But I don't think he's completely finished. I don't think he's completely finished like everyone thinks he is. Because there yeah. is still, and, he, and not being fair, he changed his play. He changed his whole way his team played yesterday. He went on a, like a 4 4 2, had Mora, Mora playing, he had Son play, which they weren't playing against Bournemouth. And we, we fell into the trap thinking, oh, it's going to be, oh, we're going to win easy because they're shit, this and that. And if you look at it, and do you say that everyone says we dominated the game, which I don't think we did, because if you look at it, the bar best player on the bridge was Martinez. Yeah. So yeah, it, saves it, in, in, uh, it could have it could have even been more. I mean, the times of, uh, Mustafi was on the floor and Martinez come to his rescue. God, I mean, yeah. I'm, listen, I, I I just feel we've got. You, Give credit where it's due. They, these, I think they deserve to win yesterday. Um, they defended better than us, and they took their chances. And that's what the game's all about. I think there's um, uh, yeah, the, chat, uh, the question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we will do that first. Then beatbox beat said Terry Jose would have demanded signings from the board and instilled a winning mentality, which is exactly why our fans wouldn't want him. Uh, for me, beatbox. I've been saying this for a while. It does not matter if Mourinho come in, Simeone come in. Well, to be honest, they wouldn't have come in. Because if that was the case, and that there's someone in the board that is signing these players or they're saying that David Luiz has got to be in the team and all that, Jose Mourinho wouldn't come for that reason anyway. Or would Simeone. And if they did, they'd be out on a... Uh, uh, they'd walk out straight away. Mm. This, this, I, I, I can't understand why some of our fans don't understand that we are in a bad situation at the moment. We've got 10, 11 players in our squad that definitely need to go. I think we can all agree on that. Every Arsenal fan. There's 10 or 11 players that need to go. And no, that is never ever going to happen in, in one window. Now, if you if you look at some of our, our, our other fans that come on this channel, like the Liverpool fans, Delwyn Jones, he, he said that when Klopp took over... In 2015, it took him five years to get rid of everyone in that squad that we took over to then get the squad that he's got now. And look what's happened. He's won the league with them. Yeah, he's but won he's the also, league. They, they've also had, also, it took five years. Can you imagine if they didn't get that money that they got for Coutinho? The money they got for Coutinho is an um, unbelievable business. We haven't got a ball deal that's capable of getting that sort of money. We let our players run their contracts down. So it's going to be a lot harder. And I tell you what, it's going to be a lot harder than five years to get this. Well, you think they took five years. How is it long it's going to take us, mate? And no, yep. and don't tell me our fans are going to give Arteta five years to get this done. No, 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 chance no, no, no. In hell, mate. No chance in hell. No, exactly. No, I totally agree with you. But um, the only thing I would say against that is, is if you look at um, what... What the uh, sorry, I'll come back to that in a minute because we're getting a super chat in, and I want to ask this question from Stu. He said, I tell, please ask Claude his thoughts on Granite Sakar uh, strolling and fought, failing to provide an angle for Kozniak when pressed by Kane. For me, he is terrible at alleviating pressure, not selfless enough. 
Well, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people that are very mixed on Jack at yesterday. A lot of people said he had a good game. I look, people are putting his passing to, 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 uh see someone put his passing uh, stats on today. But you can't go by passing stats because 98% passing rate, can, you could be passing the ball two bloody yards um, to someone. So I, I, I don't agree always on that. The, a lot of his work positionally wasn't very good yesterday. But yeah, it's, it, it divides. Shaka divides opinion, just like Ozil. He divides opinion in our fan base. What's the super chat, uh, Terry? Uh, like, super chat uh, from I, that's all right, mate. Uh, for un unknown driller, thank you very much for your contribution, mate. He says, Terry is spot on. I believe Allegri was first choice last summer, but rejected the job job due to funds. Ancelotti went to Everton because he was promised money. Arteta took the job. Uh, he wants to prove himself. Yes, but this is, not, this is not a place for trainees. You know what I'm saying? You know, at the end of the day, this is a place where we need someone that can come in and actually do the job straight away. We're not here. This is not a training camp for managers. We're a big club there. If you want to train, if you want to go and train to be, a, uh, to prove yourself, go to a club a, low, uh, a bit lower. Maybe he would have been better off going to Everton. And there's no disrespect to Everton. He's a former Everton player. He would have been better, him going there. Because then at least he would learn the, the ropes a bit. This is a massive club. I'm not having a go at Everton, by the way. They're not the club that they are. They were a few years ago, yeah. See, I, I, I do disagree with that, obviously, with you, Claude. Um, it's just my opinion. Like I said, um, we was asked a question uh, when we was on Anfield Agenda about why did Saka sign a new deal, new deal at Arsenal um, when, obviously, there was other clubs fishing about Liverpool, for instance. They wanted him and other things. Now, my answer to that was, if Emery was still our manager, Saka would not be here now. I'm 100% positive on that. Um, he would not. He would not be our player now. The reason why he stayed is the reason why we've seen a lot of things on Instagram lately from our own Arsenal players is because he believes in the philosophy of Arteta. He believes in in what he wants to do. Yeah, and... yeah. Yeah, it's all very well saying that, but he also believes he's going to get more. He, he ain't just going to be left to be in a, in a play playing in the on the bench all the time at Liverpool. If he'd have gone somewhere like Liverpool, he could have go onto the bench and completely. I've seen players completely forgotten about. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Who was? Uh, that's a great one. That's a great example. Um, I remember. Was it Rodwell? Who was, was playing forever and. Jack Rodwell was it? Was Everton player? He was big Everton when he went to big, went to City. Prospect. Man City got disappeared, disappeared off mm. the scene, mate. I've seen players go from to Man City and completely disappoint, disappear off the scene. Well, what, who's the other one? Uh, all right, he's doing. He's not doing. Too, not done. Too. Fabian Delph went to City. Mm. What happened to him? You could even say yeah. the same about Bakari Sanya, went to Man City. What did, how long did he last there? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. we've got another we've got another super not. chat here. Um Beatbox Binks is saying, stop this Klopp comparison. Klopp proved himself at Dortmund and won titles before Liverpool got him. No disrespect to Mikel, he's done nothing to him. No, I, I I'm not comparing him to him, but Beatbox. If you listen to what I said. Is that Klopp coming to Liverpool and it's took him five years to get rid of the players that they had then to make the squad that he's got now. I'm not comparing him and saying that he's going to be a Klopp and he's going to win the Champions League and he's going to win the, the league and things like that. What I'm trying to say is it's took Klopp five years. And yeah, and Liverpool... exactly. And, he, and he's got the experience of winning titles in Germany. So how long is he going yeah. to take Arteta? Do you know what I'm saying? Well, he's got the actual experience. Yeah. But we, we, we went for an experienced manager, Claude. We went for an experienced I, manager. I, yeah, and, I know and, that. But and, you know what? I on. think we all know. You know why that failed. He, he wasn't prepared. And a lot of the problem is you come to the English game, you're not prepared to learn the language, and you're going to struggle, mate. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. And that's my, probably no, the we, main reason. We can't give him that excuse, Claude, because there's a lot of managers that have come over, especially the Leeds manager who has an interpreter next to him every time he has an interview, and look what he's done to Leeds. We can't use that as an excuse, mate. 
it's a different Come club, on, different way of uh, player, different players. These players, you remember, you got uh, players that are, are virtually like some of our players. They're really high, highly. Um, uh, listen, what I'm trying to say is, it's, it's. I, I don't think it's so much that, mind you. I don't as he. What's, I don't even know what's happened to him now. I think that's really hit him that that losing that job. Uh, anyway, what was this? Who's, who's the? What's this message coming along? Come along yeah. Yeah, this is from the Mister Arsenal podcast. Um, Adrian, mate, you know, he says I'll take a walk into the mess back in December. What are people expecting him to do when Wenger and Emery's players? Mikel knows what he needed to fix this. Yeah, we all knew, we said that about Emery as well. We knew what to do to fix it. Listen, I hope he does, and I hope he gets on. All I'm saying is, at the moment, he's the the, the couple of big tests that he's come up against, he's failed. Olympiacos, he failed. This last game, he went up against Mourinho, and he he failed. All I'm saying, and I'm saying this now, I'm, all I'm saying is. He could well turn it around and be uh, at this moment. He is not exempt from criticism. Listen, I don't care. Even even, and I'm going to say this now. I don't care what anyone says. I thought Abamyang was poor on, on on Sunday. He don't get he don't get free from criticism because he's Abamyang. No, he was poor. So so he's he's entitled to be criticised. You know they they get they all they all love the praise when they get the praise. But when they've got to take the criticism when it's when it's uh, justified. Anyway, mm. uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just think, to, to be honest, I just can't understand why some fans. I'm just. This is just my opinion. I just can't understand why some fans can't see the situation that we have been left in. Um, you know, we were talking about. Obviously, Liverpool sold Coutinho for 140 million and things like that. That's because the managers that was there beforehand was trying to do a great job at Liverpool. Wenger bought some of these players that are still in this squad now, and Emery bought most of these players that are still in this squad now. So that's what you've got to look at. We've left with these players due to these managers buying these players. Mm. If I ever signed up David Luiz, I totally get that he should ne he shouldn't even be in our squad. He should not even be in our squad, right? No, they brought him to this club. Same as um, Liechtenstein last year. You can't you can't one minute say he's uh, blame him. Uh, not you can't you can't have it both ways. Either you you can't say oh well it's it's the club's fault because he signed Luiz and the next minute he's he's okay for so. Give him time. You can't have it both ways, yeah. I, I agree with you. In time, he may become a great man. He might become a great. At this present moment, he's got a lot to learn. He's got a lot to learn, and he better start learning quick because we, you know, you don't get time in this in this game, mate. You don't get time at all, mate. And then uh, come the season starts and gets off to a bad start and things like that, then the pressure's on again, mate. I just want to say, Anita, um, welcome back to the chat. She said, I saw the news about Jack Charlton. Claude, what did you remember from when England won the World Cup and what type of player was Jack Charlton? I just well, want to say, <laughs> to Jack well, Charlton, considering I was only... When, family. When, when, he, when England won the World Cup, was uh, three going on to four, so I don't think I'll remember too much about that. Um <laughs> But I do remember him in the seventies. Great player for Leeds, uh, f uh, fantastic character uh, as a manager. Done well, incredible job at, for the Republic of Ireland. Maybe people didn't like his style of football, but he he, he got them to um, what was it, the quarterfinals um, against. Uh, eventually, they went out, but uh, amazing job. Uh, actually, won games against England. Uh, an incredible, incredible guy, very much missed, and a, a nice, humble guy as well. Uh, very sad, very, very sad weekend. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on a little bit from uh, the Arteta thing then and move on to obviously a lot of people saying that Arteta shouldn't hold up. Before I do that, we've got a super chat coming in. 
Uh, unknown driller again. Thank you very much for your contribution, mate. Uh, Angelotti, a free time. Uh, Angelotti, a free time Champion League winner, was available in December, and we went for Pep's assistant. Sorry to say, he's a puppet for the board, inexperienced manager. Ule will control. Not all his fault, though. Unfortunately for me, uh, unknown driller, uh, Angelotti will do nothing with Everton. Um, I, me personally, I don't want, I didn't want Ancelotti. I don't think he'd be any good for us. Same as Mourinho, I put him in the same class. I know what they've done. I know what they've done in the past. But it doesn't mean to say that if they come to Arsenal, that they're going to do all that for us. We're in a shit situation at the minute. We've got no money. The club keeps telling us that. We've got a shit squad. So I'm, I don't understand what you expect from anyone coming in, even with their experience and what they've won. They're not going to turn this team around into Champion League winners. Because I think that's what I truly think that some of our fans think. I think, if they, I think they think if Mourinho come here or Diego Simeone, we'd be fighting for the Champions League next year. Hmm. I don't yeah, know about well, you, Colin. Well, yeah, it's a, a matter of opinion. I, I think he's gone to a, it's gone. Their squad is not exactly, I think, not that good anyway. So. Uh, they're, they're worse than us, aren't they? Their squad, so yeah, I think he, he's got better. He would have had better player, at least better players here. I don't know, we're not a bit, a little bit more of an upgrade. And I think, to be honest, he, I think he's experiencing the game and everything else. I think I don't think he'd have lost that Olympia Arcus game. Sorry, mate. I think uh, he wouldn't have lost. But that, that was that was down to a, that was down to a player mistake again. Again, yeah, but, that was down to a player Yeah, mistake. but then again, on, on the night, I mean, this is another one of his great thoughts from Martel. We had the player of the month. Uh, I know now he's injured now in training after all that, but they had the player of the month, not even in that game, right? And he brought it in, he brought it on so far too late. I mean, that night, I think he would have made such a difference. And he didn't play him in that. If he came on as substitutes when it was too late. So, you know, I mean, I'll, see, there's enough, these are decisions that cost us games. I know you say we lost it because, because of errors and all that, but they, these are, if we'd have put, if we had Martinelli on, we would have had a lot more uh, going forward than we had that night. And I think uh, it made us another big mistake. I don't understand why, why Martinelli was uh, suddenly taken out of, the, out of the frame as well. That's another thing. I mean, but surely we could go the other way. And I could say, then, well, then it's all Lacazette's fault against Leicester because he didn't put them chances away that Arteta has set the team up to do. And he's our striker and he didn't put them away. Well, listen, yeah, of course he didn't put them away. But, <laughs> yeah, the Leicester, if it, the Leicester if he, if game... If he put them away, he would have beat Leicester. But, yeah, the Leicester game was a bit puzzling as well because even then, I think, he, we... <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it was Arteta's fault for Leicester game. I thought what we'd done there, I mean, we didn't put, as you say, we didn't put our chances away. And that was it. Simple. I mean, and <laughs> if you don't put your chance, when you're, what, we was, the first half we played really well, but I mean, you, you got to go in two or three nil up with the chances we had. We didn't. And I think a lot of it is that, and you know, I noticed that again, I think second half of games, our fitness levels are completely, Shot. We like we're playing for one half. I don't yeah, know. No, I, know, I know what you're saying, but that is that to me is why I, me personally, why I didn't like Henry as a manager because I thought he he, he trained too soft. I think he, he he, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming out in the on Instagram now from our own players, especially with Tieni when he was told by Emery. And the players to go soft in training mm. because but that was like, that, that was only not only Emery, and what you've got to rem remember is this is Wenger. But those players yeah. were so used to uh, Wenger doing it that they dropped. They dropped. They didn't want to. They didn't want to. They thought, oh well, we've been here with Wenger so long, and that's another thing that went against Emery as well. And them players were, were used to this what they were under Wenger. Doing all that under Wenger, they, they they didn't believe in Emery, and maybe Emery couldn't do nothing about it. I don't know. It's it's very hard to say unless you're in the club. 
and you know yeah. what's going on day for day by day, which Arsenal are very very secretive about. You don't know what's going. You don't know what's going on. Uh, there's another one there, mate. Joseph. Um, yeah, one I'll of just... our members. One of our members. Moving to Dan. Two seconds. Uh, yeah, let's move on quick. Oh, we've got another. We've got uh, Joseph. He said, "Miss Fabregas, Rosicky type of players." Do you agree with that, Claude? Mm. Yeah. Although I'm not, I didn't like what Fabregas done to the football club. I didn't like the way he went to the church. Um, and the way he left us against for Barcelona, I didn't like the way he done things. So, but I do agree they are players. Uh, yeah, and Rosicky, but Rosicky was always injured. That was his problem. But he was a top player. Um, beatbox um, is saying, uh, Terry, genuine question, all respect. Do you always blindly back the manager to be positive? Because I want to know what you see in Arteta Wenger too, in my opinion. Uh, no, I don't. I, I wanted Wenger out from from about five years after the undefeated season. I wanted him out for about six, seven seasons. I think he was useless in the end, to be honest. He, he left us in most of this shit um, with the players that he was bought. When you look at all them players that we had in that undefeated season, he didn't go like for like when he was buying players. He was going to pan land. Um, and then with Emery, I, I didn't back him whatsoever. I didn't want him to come in. I gave him the benefit of the doubt when he became our manager and got behind him. Even on that 23 game um, 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 uh, unbeaten run, I was still coming away from them games when I was going there, season ticket older, watching them games, coming away, winning my dad and my brother, moaning down the phone, saying, I can't understand how we won them games. We was mm. absolutely poor. We was poor. Yeah. yeah, by the way, hello, hello, um, Hello, Flo. He's in the chat. Hello, Flo. Hope you're well, mate. Um, what's this from Diesel? What's he on about now? What's, what's he He's got, about? Pick up, Jen. Hope everybody in the chat is all sweet. <laughs> all right. Um, Hello, Diesel. You're all right, mate. Let's, let's move on from Arteta for a minute and move on yeah. to, obviously, the other biggest uh, conversation on Twitter today. And that was that uh, half of our fan base wanted Mourinho as our manager. Well, I think, Would we've, you touched him? I think we've touched Would on you? this. We could go yeah, on right, just quickly, about just quickly, it. just quickly. Would you have had him instead of Arteta? At the time, yes. At the time, I'm not so sure now whether I, I still think there is something in him, but I just he just he just needs the right club. Uh, so I wouldn't write him off completely. But who knows what he could do at Spurs? He could still turn Spurs around. So we'll wait and see on that one. We'll wait and see. I think we should move on a bit. Cause we, we yeah, yeah. This. All right, let's move on to, uh, obviously, the big, massive decision today was uh, the Man City appeal. Uh, two years in the making, basically. And uh, you never guess what. I don't think anyone would have believed this or this was a big shock. Do you, do you know what, Terry? I've always thought, this, always thought this thing is, is a joke anyway. Uh, I don't think, UEFA have any right to tell how people to run their business or how they can invest in their business. You can't tell a business where you can't buy this and you can't buy that. What's this all about? If you've got the money, if you've got more money than someone else, in, 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 at the end of the day, you're going to be richer than someone else and you're entitled to build your business bigger than someone else. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, just just quickly, Paul. Cool. Just quickly, sorry, mate. We've got a lovely comment here from, uh, I think that's Cypro Gee. It says, um, I'm a Spurs fan, but I wish you success with your with your channel, Claude. You keep it real and appear to be a genuine guy, unlike some of the others on the other channel. Keep safe, mate. Yeah, well, we, we no, I'm not going to start saying it about other no, channels. No, no, he's just saying that he's a Spurs yeah, fan. No, that's good. I, other, so, other, yes. I wish other channels well. I mean, every, every other channel has got their own way of doing things. Uh, I My channel does things my uh, the way we want to do it. And I just wish everyone success. And, uh, you know, I've got no bias against anyone. Um, the, uh, it seems to be a lot of people on my back tonight about certain situations, which I won't be going on, on about. But at the end of the day, I wish everyone <laughs> well. Um, yeah, getting back to the FFP, I mean, that's an absolute disgrace, Claude. Let's be honest. Um, 
Well, 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 I think we all knew it when Man City turned up with their uh, their their mafia of about forty people going into that courtroom, and they had one for every different uh, occasion. I think you know to get 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 out of it. But look, my but, the, view is, but I, I I cannot take a, an organisation that employed one of the uh, the corrupt, uh, which was proven guilty by the way. Before anyone comes on. Uh, uh, we all remember uh, Platini. He's the one that brought all this up, and he's one of the most, as we all know, with his dealings with FIFA. I think he got thrown off. And to be on, and to be honest with you, I, I'd never agree with this FFP. I think it's bullshit. People are every business can run as what they ever want. Always the bigger clubs are going to be bigger because they've got more money. It's like. Um, like someone in the corner shop or someone that owns Tesco's he's always going to, the one at Tesco's is always going to be bigger than the one bloke in the corner shop that's life do you know what I'm trying to say so yeah, no, I, I, just, do I don't understand this this crap this, you've got the money to spend you're entitled to spend it and now Kronk has got the, the go ahead now to to forget this FFP and get on with it now and uh, mind you having said all that he's given us money but it's been wasted so it's not really down so much clunk as the people that are spending his money. And to be honest with you, when uh, when people start, uh, when you spend, when you give someone 70 million and he spends it on Mustafi and Xhaka, then you've got to blame the people who are actually spending it for him. But that's another subject. But, you know, let's, um, what's this from Flo? We've got a super chat here from Flo. How are you doing, mate? Hope you will. Oh, nice um, he says, nice if market, he's not back in the transfer market, I think he should walk out. And if he doesn't, uh, he's, uh, he's out for a paycheck and a yes man. I think he needs to grow a pair. I'm not sold on him yet. That, that, um, that, that is what I totally agree with him. And this is what I, my point is. In the summer, if he doesn't get the back in, right, and he just stays there and goes with the same players and doesn't get a proper back in, then he is entitled to say, "Right, well, I'm walking," but he won't because at the end of the day, he's more, as you say, as Flo says, he, he, "We'll see, we'll see what happens." Uh, what was that before? Uh, the one before, sorry, there was one uh, before. 72, that one, seventy-two yeah. million for Pepe, nothing for Saka. Who has had the better season? Well, you, you could say so, but let's let's be honest with Pepe. He's, he's just come in. Uh, it's going to take him a while to, to settle in English football. So it's a bit of cruel to be comparing them. But Saka's definitely had a better season. Yeah. Um, quickly, my point of view on the FFP. Look, uh, there was a message from think, Diesel there. Yeah, yeah. He said it's all about money. It's all corrupt. And it's been a while. It's been for a while. It has, mate. You're, you're totally right, Diesel. Uh, that's what I mean. I think we're one of the only fan bases that ever talk about the FFP. Whenever I talk to uh, opposing fans, they never once mention about FFP. All they mention about is going out and buying players. Do you know, do you, do you know what makes me laugh, Terry? And I'm going to say, this is how stupid this fan base is, right? Go on, mate. They think FFP, uh, they, they believe in FFP, uh, financial fair play, yeah? Right? Yeah. Is that, yeah? They all believe. Yeah. At the same time, they, they want Crocky to spend money. Make your mind up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's exactly. absolutely inc- yeah. Do you see where I'm coming? Do you see what I'm saying here? On the one end, they're telling, oh, I'll spend 200 million. And then they're saying, hold on. And then they're saying, I don't, I, it's not right that teams pay to spend money. Yet they want Crocky to spend the money. So how do you work that one out? Yeah. No, I, 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 totally, I totally agree with you there. It's, it's totally just brain dead. That. They're brain dead. Our <laughs> fan base is brain dead. I'm sorry, well, mate. that's what I'm saying. Look, I, they, I don't they, want they, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't I'm sorry to say this because they, they, yeah. especially, especially that idiot that puts the thing over his face. I mean, he. he, he <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh, don't, even about, mate. don't even worry about that. You know I mean? He's got so, a bloody tea cosy on his head and he's telling me how, to, how football should be run. Jesus Christ, the, the, world's, the world's gone fucking mad, mate. Anyway, go uh, on. Yeah, I was just going to say that I don't want to hear from another Arsenal fan about FFP, right? At the end of the day, the, my opinion of it is, 
is in this pub now. Kronk has got the the, the 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 thing now to go out and spend whatever he wants if he wants to do that, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're only going to get fined ten million pound for doing it, then I say go and do it all the time. Every team's going to go and do it because yeah. now now they've set now they've set set the president that they're only going to get a ten million pound fine. They can't do any more to anybody else because that that will be an absolute joke. So if we're only going to get fined ten million, sod all this FFP. Just go out and buy the players you, that we want, and let's go for it. And you know what? You are, you are for a quaking in their boots as well, because the, when it comes to the big boys with the big money and the big lawyers, they are shit scared to go to court because they know they're going to lose. Here we go. Well, exactly, exactly. Uh, big up, Diesel. We said only one dislike. We're doing okay, boys. <laughs> Thank you for that one dislike. No, we like it. I bet, I bet we know where that's come from. Yeah, and uh, so has said, uh, "Let's give Kozniak a five-year extension." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I yeah. do like that one. Uh, String says, "Also, getting more watchers, these so big channel." Thanks, mate. Thanks for your support. We appreciate that, mate. Uh, yeah, we'll time, doing, we'll, I think we'll be doing because uh, I've got a Man City preview on another channel at nine on Thursday. So, sometime on Thursday, we'll be doing the members. I think they'll be announced tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing a members screen for our members on Thursday. There'll be a Q and A just to get to know everyone on the, on the, all And we'll even members. get a couple of people on on the stream. Uh, yeah, well, well I'll put, I will be putting the options on the screen to come on as well. So yeah, so let, let's uh, look forward to meeting our members on I Thursday. I can't unfortunately put the uh, link on the uh, comments at the moment because I'm not on my actual laptop. So. If you want to go and become a member before Thursday so you can uh, come on the member stream, just go on to our YouTube channel, Crawled and the Bansters, and you'll be able to join there. You can join for less than um, an Happy Meal. one Take away one Happy Meal a month, and that's one ninety nine. You can join for that, or a Big Mac Meal a month, and that's eight ninety nine for the gold membership. Uh, let's or, get a couple or, of more. Or even half a even half an hour. Well, yeah, even now, but they're, they're going to probably shut the pubs again soon, aren't they? So you have to get in quick. You have to get in quick. All right, let's take a few more questions before we uh, finish up. Cool. We've got uh, da -da -da -da, flow diesel. As those wheelchairs coming along, lad, you found any? <laughs> um, da -da -da -da. Joe says, "Don't mug off Kozniak. Arteta shouldn't be playing him as a centre off." Well, you've got a point there, to be honest. And all Joey shouldn't be playing him as a, as a centre-half. I, I, I do agree with you there, to be honest. I don't know about you, Claude. He shouldn't be playing anywhere on the pitch, no my centre-half. <laughs> uh, Mark says, great work, fellas. Thank you, mate. Really appreciate that. Uh, what else we got? Um, Alex says, it's not football, it's business now. 70s and 80s was football and not a business. Ivory, when I started going, was a game. I mean, when they gave Kolesnitz the left back spot, they meant left back in the dressing room. Right. Uh, what was that? Sorry. Uh, that's, I'll tell you what, quickly, Claude. I'll tell you what we do is obviously, because Lone Star's put it, let's see a response on Wednesday. What's your thoughts on the game on Wednesday? Obviously, we've got Liverpool and then I, the big game, obviously, on Saturday against City in the FA Cup semi final. I, unlike you, I don't think we can make too many changes because I think a lot of our squad is, a lot of the squad is injured or. On loan, so I think he's. I think what he will have to. I think he needs to give up if he wants to play holding on, on on Saturday. I think he needs a run out as anyway on to boost his fitness up, match fitness. So maybe that that would be a good idea to bring holding in on on Wednesday. Uh, as I say, you. I don't think. I don't think. You know what. I think he's going to have to pick roughly the same team because there's no, there's no. With Eddie and Ketia as well, you are in, uh, suspended. You can't even rest any of the forwards, can you? Well, uh, I don't know. Listen, no. in a way, in a way, it might be good to play the team, get it out of, get this defeat, a way of getting this defeat out of the system, and and if we do win, it's a good confidence booster for Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, for me, look, I mean, the season, you know, I mean, I know the season was over anyway, but coming back, we did have a few, you know what I mean, thinking that we could at least get a European place. But for me, I think that's over with now. I'm not really bothered no, no, about no. it. I, 
it's not about European place. It's about getting confidence for yeah, yeah. the game on on uh, Saturday. On Saturday, Saturday night. Because, but look, look, what I'm trying to say is, if we do get, if we put a lot of uh, kids in, like you were saying, and we got hammered, it's not good to morale going in, into Saturday either. So I think the best thing is to do is to give these uh, play the team. Uh, for 60 minutes and then rotate the, the, the most the important players after about 70, 60, 70 minutes and take we've got the options of five subs so say we're not either <laughs> get, if we are getting fresh then we could just take Aubameyang and all these players off and rest mm. them for sa- the rest of the game what, what's, your, what's your prediction? Uh, everyone in the uh, in the chat Give us your prediction for, for I Wednesday's game. Be, I wouldn't be surprised because Arsenal will be determined to make amends. They'll be determined after what a disappointment or so. So there'll be a lot of more effort. And maybe our intensity will be a lot higher than Liverpool's who are having won the league. It's not easy to, to... It's all very well people saying keep up the intensity, but it's not going to be easy for them. I wouldn't be surprised if we nick a draw set on. On Wednesday night, Nick could draw one or or, or, even, or even two two, but I think we. Yeah, for me, for uh, and after uh, what just, I saw tonight, incredible Man United. Yeah, we've been on this great winning run, dropping two points against Southampton, and what I see, Bournemouth knocking four against <laughs> Leicester. After when I when I left the game, Leicester were in total control. And I got home to find they were lost the game 4-1. And Chelsea losing to Sheffield United. You know what? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Just before I give mine, uh, Anita said, Cruel, can you do me a favour and say Bellissima with an Italian accent? Uh, bellissima. Bellissima, Anita. Come stay. Stay bene. Io ti amo. Oh. Io, io ti amo, Anita. Is that all right? I tell you what, Claude, you're gonna have all girls, you know what I mean? Looking at you now, mate. Uh now look, getting back to the Wednesday night game. Um look, I, I don't care about Wednesday night game to be honest. Um it's it's over now in the league. Uh, I don't care if he puts out the kids. If we put if he puts out a weakened team, I think we get beat 3 0. If we do put out a strong team, um I think it'd be maybe a one all or they they beat us two one. That's what I'm going for. But I'm more interested in having the Saturday game against Man City. I think, yeah, I, think I think everyone is more in, uh, worried about Saturday and, not, and too right they should be. Everyone uh, give us your predictions then for Saturday. Obviously the FA Cup semi final. What's your predictions then? Claude, what are you going for? We all know it's going to be an hard uh, game. Well, I, I want to ask the flow. I've not been on Insta because we were we were taken off for a few days for no reason. Uh, it was a bit, a bit of a mistake by uh, Instagram. But uh, I will have a chat with you one day, uh, in the next few days on Insta. Don't worry, uh, Flo. Yeah, uh, always a nice guy. Sorry, Gogo, who was that comment before Lone Star? Sorry. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't a comment. I just said, let's quickly go on to um, Saturday's game then. A big game, obviously, FA Cup semi final. The only thing really we've got left to play for now. What are your hopes and going into that game? I know we, we all think it's going to be a, you know I mean, a really hard game. But what do you think? We've got, we've got to get over Wednesday for, I know it's easy, but you don't know what injuries we're going to pick up on Wednesday, if we pick up any. Uh, so, we've got to get Wednesday out of the way. What, what was that from Diesel? Diesel said, Claude, the Italian stallion. No, I wish. I wish I was a stallion. <laughs> um, Man City. What do I think Man City? I, I, I'm, I'm praying that we do a Southampton. They'll have 27 shots on goal. And we, <laughs> we, get, we get a lucky goal on the break. That'd be nice. And go through to Wembley. Would you take that, Terry? Oh, yeah, of course I would, mate. Of course I would. After after the, after this season, I'll take that. Uh, you know what? I would take 95 minutes of under siege and Martinez putting off Weldies and then going down the other end and David Louise getting an header to win it. I mean, that would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? Let's I'm, be honest. I, I can go back to 1979 when we played Nottingham Forest at the City Ground. <laughs> 
We was under siege, and then Frank Stapleton scored. We sh we were under siege for the whole game. It's the year we won the F FA Cup. That was the hardest one in the in the way to, uh, to winning it, and we was under siege for uh, for most of that game, and we ended up uh, with a Frank Stapleton. I think it was a header, and we we fucking we went through. Um, that's the sort of game I, I'm expecting on Saturday. What was that? Was so what's, your prediction? what's your prediction, Claude? My heart says that we're going to go uh, take it to penalties. <laughs> <laughs> and Martinez is going to have a blinder and, uh, and the vital penalty will be missed by... De Bruyne, but uh, that's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> my head says, my head says, uh, hope we keep the score down. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit the same as you, to be honest. I think we all can dream. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we, you know, Wenger, when he should have retired, when he won the FA Cup against Chelsea in the final, everyone ripped us off. We was the big underdogs. Chelsea was going to annihilate us. Mm, but, yeah, but you know, we had better players then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm saying, you know, it, it's not, it's not, mm. you know. We had Alexis Sanchez and we had uh, Ozil playing. It wasn't oh, no. too bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be optimistic. Yeah, you know I mean, that's all I'm yeah. trying to be. You know I mean, if we, we can, if we, if we put our best team out there, we can put a performance in. I would be, I would think that if we, played really well like we did against Leicester. If we played something like that, you know, like you said, we could maybe go one all and take it to extra time and penalties, maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, if we played David the Weeds from the start, I'm not going to lie, then it would be 4 5 nil to Man City. I'm not going to lie. He's too slow. Um, they just walked past him and it wouldn't surprise me if he gets sent off again, to be honest. So, I'm hoping and praying to God that David Luiz don't get in that team on Saturday and then that will give me some hope of us at least competing on that game on Saturday. So, we'll, we'll see. have to see. We'll have to we'll see. Have to see. And, uh, who knows? Let's keep our fingers crossed. You never know. Exactly. exactly. We've, got, we've got Wednesday first anyway, like you said. No, you know what no, I mean? so no, one, no one expected Man, City, Man United to drop two points tonight. So, who knows? You never no know. One no one expected Bournemouth to beat Leicester 4 1. Exactly. No one expected United to beat Chelsea 3 0. And so if anyone did beat Man City as well, did they remember? Yeah. As if, said, anyone did, if anyone put Sheffield United down on the bed you know, and Bournemouth down. Do you know what? That is my hope. Cool. Sometimes City do overplay and that they can be, free. if you can get a goal in front, you've got half a chance because they do overplay sometimes and give you a chance to defend properly. So. Uh, there's always that hope, but uh, honestly, uh, I don't know. It's going to be quite, quite something in that studio on Saturday. I can tell you. Let, let me ask you a quick question, Cole. So, if, if and it obviously is a big, massive if, we'll probably be five we... down. We'll probably be five down and tired of blaming the ref. Anyway. If if we did win on Saturday, I mean. What a celebration that would be, surely, because it'd be like winning the cup cup already, surely. Yeah, well, good, yeah, but you know the final's going to be even harder. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, but you say that, you say that. I mean, you know, I mean, Man United, you look at them today. Chelsea, you look at them. Yeah, but they, they, they when they play us, it's a different ball game, mate. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Well, no, we've got a good <laughs> record against United this year. We took four, we took four points off them, so who knows? Yeah, yeah, exactly, mate, exactly. We could be more optimistic than what we was in the semi-final. Wow, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Flo. Really appreciate this. Um, he's got a lovely super chat here. He's got, Claude, this is for you, mate. Love your work. Don't stress too much about Arsenal, mate. As long as we offer contracts to duds, we will always be shite. <laughs> <laughs> no, cheers, Flo. You didn't have to do that, but thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, right, boys. I think that on that note, I think uh, we're going to say... Thank you to everyone to, uh, who's listened in at this late time. I don't know what time it is in Melbourne uh, at the moment. It must early, be, I think, early. I think it's about, it might be about morning, 
early mornings. Pro Flo's probably eating his breakfast there. Well, well. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, listen, um, thank you for everyone. Uh, there's a Chelsea fan car. Nice donut. Thank you, Leah. Uh, Leah. Yeah. Uh, they've got a nice, easy game tomorrow, isn't it? Norwich. Oh, God. Oh, God. Anyway. If they don't win that one, if they don't win if, that one, cool, then it needs to Norwich, be sacked, doesn't it? Do you know what? That, that, was, <laughs> that was a good thing that we had, Norwich. At least that gave us a bit of relief, didn't it? Um, yeah. Oh, it's 9 no, 07 a.m., he said. I was not far off. Right. Um, yeah, take 6 care. 6 p.m. in Texas, cool. 6 p.m. Yeah. in Texas and 107 degrees. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. Uh, take care, everyone. Hope you're all well. Have a great week. And don't forget, members, you'll be getting a notice very soon. We're all going to have a members' night for the members uh, on Thursday. I don't know. We're going to arrange the time tomorrow, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort that out. Yeah, take care, everyone. And for me, it's time to go. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everyone. See you soon.